Mm. All right, kids. Hey, how's everybody doing this morning? Welcome to the Kong Family Show. Today, kids, we have a, you know, we say around here that our goal is to change the world. We have this super simple goal. No problem. Oh, we're just going to change the world. And, um, and we have with us today, Mr. Dan Edlund. Um, and Dan lives up in Seattle. And, and the truth of the matter is, kids, is that this guy right here, he is a real world changer. He's changing the world. I, I actually shared out, I think, three posts this morning as to how this man right here is changing the world. And, uh, you know, so it's, it's so exciting to have somebody in here with us that how is going to have so many golden nuggets and so many great stories to tell. Um, as people know who have been uh, listening into the show and that kind of thing is we, we, uh, we want to change the world and we're doing it one person at a time, one little lightning bolt at a time in a box and uh, one awesome person at a time who's willing to come in here and share their stories. And so Dan, uh, welcome buddy. How's the weather up there in Seattle? You know, I, I got to be honest, I really haven't even looked. I think it's a, your typical gray, a little bit windy, got a little bit of rain going out there kind of day. So that's part for the course. <laughs> the good thing is for me, I don't have to really get up and worry about it too much. We just kind of, we move slow and easy around here in the mornings. We get up and, you know, have a little smoothie and uh, just kind of get the day started. So it's nice. Awesome, man. That that's fantastic. And you know, just another awesome day in the neighborhood for the Yeah, you gotta remember it's only 745 out here, so we we get a little slow moving in the in the morning. So <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I've been up and rocking it since 4 30 a.m. And so yeah, gotta 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 hit the grind, right? Keep it right. Rolling. And I was hoping I was hoping Sam would be on this morning, but I know that it's 345, 445 where he is, so I have zero expectations there. <laughs> well, um you know, I, uh, I want to start this show out the way that I start them all out because this happens to be one of my, one of my uh, most <laughs> curious questions. Good morning, Tristan. How you doing? Good morning. Oh, yeah, Roger. Good to see you. Francis. I'm in Fairfield, Iowa today. <laughs> I love it. So anyway, Dan, my question is that I always love to know first from everybody is, how, when, and why did you get involved with Kong and Water? And, and were you a skeptic like I was? Oh, wow. So, yeah, uh, to say the least. So um, I was actually introduced to the water five years ago by a gentleman that approached me um, and started talking to me about it. I, um, I was doing very, very well for myself. I was in the finance industry. Uh, like I said, I was making a lot of money. I wasn't looking for anything. Um, to be honest, I didn't know that there really was anything. I didn't know that, that there was a kind of, um, hello, oh, there's a, but, um, and I, like I said, I was approached and of course, uh, of course I was incredibly skeptical. And actually I was invited to this person. We have a, we had a once a week thing, now a once a month uh, meeting that we hold at a restaurant. And he invited me once a week for almost 14 months. So it took me 14 months to actually show up at the meeting. He would call me, the meetings were on Wednesday. He would call me every Monday for a commitment. Every Monday I said yes. Every Tuesday he would text me and ask me if I was gonna be there Wednesday night. And every Wednesday night I would find a reason not to go. And so I went finally after 14 months. And when I saw the demo live in person, I was, I was absolutely blown away. I was drinking two Coca-Colas a day. My work um, gave us free Coca-Cola and bottled water. So I was, I was drinking three to four Aquafinas a day. You know, we had the gals there that would, um, that would make us espresso. So, you know, my routine was four or five cups of coffee in the morning before I went to work, a couple Coca-Colas a day, a couple, uh, you know, mocha as soon as I got to work. And then, you know, like I said, four or five bottled waters a day. And I was blown away at what I saw. And although um, the demo was very, very compelling to me, I hadn't, in all that 14 months, I had never drank a glass of water. Wow. So you had only drank bottled water at that point in your life. Right. So, you know, the conversation was, yeah, you know, I kept saying to the guy, you, you do understand, you do understand that, you know, I have water at my house. And he's like, yeah, but I'm trying to get you to see why this is dramatically different. But it wasn't until I went to the spaghetti factory 
By the way, JJ, you're seeing a gentleman on here. Uh, you see Steve on there. Now, I now do that event with Steve. Um, and like we spoke about the other day, I want you guys to connect. Now, that's something we do once a month, but it used to be a once a week event. So after 14 months, I, I saw what I saw. I was incredibly moved. And that's what pushed me to actually go to the for the first time. Wow, that's uh, 14 months. You know, I thought me taking six months was long. <laughs> well, you know, yeah, I, I, was, I was pretty sure I knew what I knew, and I was pretty sure I had water at my house, and I just didn't see any reason, you know. And, yeah, you know, you got to understand, I mean, I was, I was 55, 60, 65 hours a week. You know, my time off was very, very precious. I didn't want to go sit what I thought was some – you know, I'll use Daniel D. McCauley's line, the last, you know, the last business you go join before you die type of situation. And I just, you know, I, I thought, I thought I had a pretty good life and I just didn't see any reason to go, you know, spend my only night off or sometimes I would only get one day a week off and, and go sit in some deal. So, you know, judgment is huge and, you know, and I, and I was full of it. So. Wow. You know, uh, I, by the way, uh, Tristan, Roger, Francis, Steve, um, thank you for coming in here today. And uh, definitely, if you've got some questions for Dan a little bit later, or some comments, we'd definitely love to get to them. Um, real quickly, I'd just like to get through a couple of the, the main things that I always like to get out there as a kind of a basis for the show. And so that leads me to the next question. I, I think that's so interesting that you were because so many people, most everybody, most everybody's a skeptic about this. They For think sure. water's just water, you know, and, and what they don't realize is they're absolutely correct. Water is right. just water. Con's yeah. water is something completely different. <laughs> and, and JJ, and I don't, and I don't want to sidetrack it, but I'll tell you what, and you can ask anybody that's on this call that knows me, um, the, the 14 months that I went through that has probably been the best thing for my business because I'm the kind of guy – you may be in the outfield, in the infield, or right in front of me, but I never forget anybody. And when, when somebody um, pushes me off for two months, three months, sees a video and I don't hear from them, my persistence never ends because I'll tell you what, the guy that introduced me, I mean, it's like, what if he wouldn't have been that way? What if after seven months he said, this guy's a jack, man, I'm going to quit sending him texts. So I don't ever forget that in my pursuit. And the thing is we can we can get frustrated. We can we can do all those things. And no, no, no. You got to understand. This is so much dramatically better. But my thing is, is I use a real um, funny catchphrase of, "Hey, maybe this isn't the right time for you. I just want you to remember who introduced you to this first. And I'll leave it at that. Very subtle. I don't I don't burn any bridges. But you know, I know the power of follow up, and I know that it's um, you know, and my girlfriend Liz, who's I mean, she's getting ready, getting us some smoothies and going to jump on here in a second. But, um, you know, she says at best, you know, we got to meet people where, where they're at. And, um, you know, he didn't, he didn't, you know, stop calling. He didn't stop texting. He didn't stop inviting. And, you know, I'm going to be, you know, one day I hope a two, two in his business and then a two, three, and then a two. So, you know, what if he would have missed that by just walking away? So it's the power of the follow-up and, you know, it, I don't get discouraged like I think I would have normally been. Yeah, if you would, if you hadn't gone through that process and had somebody sure. so consistent. Hey, if they, you know, if they tell me they're not a skeptic, I, don't, I almost don't trust them. You know what I mean? It's like, because, you know, we're just naturally inclined to be a little bit, when we've never heard of something and never seen anything, to be a little bit, well, if it, so I get the famous line all the time, well, if it was so good, why, why haven't I heard of it? So, right. you know. <clears throat> Yeah, isn't that the truth? You know, we that's uh, you guys already. We're only just a couple of minutes into the show, and we've already had a tremendous golden nugget thrown down on us. And you know, the the the, the fortune is in the follow up. And you know, don't give up on people. I know that this is something that, quite frankly, Dan, I wish I would have met you right in the beginning because of those words and your story that would have helped me a lot. Because I have uh, I've had a lot of people, mostly my family that I'm just like, yeah, whatever, you know, you guys, I, ah. and, sure. and the truth is, is I need to, I need to be more patient and more persistent and uh, more understanding of where their position is. 
Um, you know, and so this is great learning experience for me as well. And I, I really appreciate that a ton. Well, and if, it, and if it makes you feel any better, JJ, I've been talking to my sister for three and a half years about Kongan water. And um, I think she just won't do it because it's my idea. She's one of those people that it was hers, you know, she would have, she would have killed everybody in the family if they didn't do it for with her. But, um, you know, and, and so nine months ago, I find out from my mom that behind my back, not, she didn't buy a machine, but she's been going and buying Kongan water at a place in Tulsa, Oklahoma for the last nine months. So she goes and gets three gallons every other day. She pays $3 a gallon. And that's her answer to not getting something from her brother or joining his, you know, snake oil machine. Period. Yeah, right. Isn't that classic? I love it. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. You know, so my, my next question, Dan, as we, we move on, I, this whole thing is all about stories to me. And you'll, you'll hear me say the word stories probably ad nauseum. And I apologize for that, but I just can't help it because it was a story that brought me in. It was, you know, I sat and ignored, ignored for six months, like I said. And finally, that fateful story came across from that beautiful angel, Brittany Dykes. And, uh, and so I'm, my quest is to share stories, to share information, to share knowledge. And, and, and so my next question is always pretty much the same. How is, how is, aside from the financial aspect of it, because I'm quite sure that with your situation, it's helped you a great deal there. But as far as your health aspects, how, how has it changed your life and how has it changed people around your life? Oh, my goodness. I, issues and things like that. Oh, well, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start with that. I mean, as far as my own health, you know, um, that was really – when I saw the demo, you know, I had heard, hey, no medical claims, we're not stating anything. But, you know, I'd been on 80 milligrams of provostatin for six years. And I kind of realized, you know, he had said something in the demo of, you know, you're on medication and then they raise the medication or you go back and they put you on a different medication. And that kind of stuck with me because I was kind of like, you know, I'm the, I'm the guy, I wanted to refute everything, but I was on 20 milligrams. And then 16 months later, they put me on 40. And then a year and a half later, they moved it to 60. And that, that resonated with me in um, me doing that. And so my own personal experience is, sorry, I got a huge dog here trying to nuzzle in. And, and this is Liz, by the way, JJJ, Liz. Hi, JJ. But, um, <laughs> and, um, and so but I'm off of cholesterol medication altogether. But you know, when you start asking me for the stories around me, I mean, it's just, I mean, I, I don't even know where to start. I mean, you know, everybody's got a story. I mean, it, you know, in my, my energy levels, obviously people don't feel that I'm lacking. I have a ton of energy. Um, I, I, can't, I can't even imagine um, a day without the water. You know, I don't, I don't, we don't go anywhere out without it. We, we travel, we go all over, we take it with us every week. You know, we took a machine to Bali for a month. We went to Mexico for a month last year. We take a machine with it. We don't go anywhere. I think the longest I've gone without the water in the three and a half, almost three and a half, four years that I've had it is about 12 hours. But um, the stories around me, I mean, even, even when, um, you know, even Sam's story, I mean, those are things that, you know, we get to see all the time or when Tristan was on the other day, I mean, you know, I really would like you to, you know, connect with her cousin, a girl named Lisa Glanzer. I mean, one of the most amazing fibromyalgia stories I've ever heard. I mean, just so compelling. And, and, you know, and she's probably a great interview too, because she, she loves to talk about the water and, and, you know, and that's, and that's what we want on here is people with compelling stories. But I mean, every day, Steve's got an amazing story. I mean, you know, Liz right here has an amazing story. We met at VegFest a few years ago and, you know, horrific eczema on her hands and on her face. And, you know, it's just, I don't know. I mean, it's, it's pretty tough. I live one mile from the office Steve and I um, hold a once a month meeting there and there's meetings every Saturday. But, you know, when you're somebody that's around that office, all it's weird to say, but all I see is stories, brother. And they're, they're amazing and they're compelling. And some of them are, will, you know, will bring you to tears. I mean, it's amazing. We have a, we had a lady yesterday that was in um, a training that Liz and, and Steve and I were doing. And, um, you know, she's PTSD coming out of the military, a lot like Lisa Glanzer is. And, um, you know, three, four months ago, she was introduced to Kong and water and she was an absolute mess. She's on 17 medications. And, um, you know, she was telling us yesterday, she goes, 
I don't want to go into the VA and, and, and tell them how good I, I feel. I, I, I think they might take all my, my money. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, well, you know, your health's the most important thing. I understand though people get into that, that situation, but, and I don't mean to be facetious and joke, but you know, the, the, the life changing things that we see are, are unbelievable with this water and anybody on this screen or, or people that are watching and people on the replay would probably reiterate that. I mean, the stories are just, you know, I, I wake up all the time and, and, you know, and I'll be talking to Steve or look at Liz and just go, how in the world do they keep this a secret? I mean, how in the world do people not know what we have? I mean, if anybody else had something this good and it was owned by Monsanto or Bayer or whoever, you know, everybody would know about it, right? Right. Yep. So, yep. <clears throat> and it wouldn't be changing near the lives. So Liz, would, would you mind uh, jumping in? I'd love to hear your story. I, this is, hopefully someday one of my oldest friends is going to, is going to listen into one of these because he thinks it's a bunch of snake oil, but he suffers from some of the worst psoriasis of anybody that I've ever seen. And now he's, he's broken to the point where he's taking steroids and yeah. the steroidal creams and that kind of stuff to be able to deal with his psoriasis. And, and he just won't listen. He's a scientist. He, he has a degree in, uh, you know, whatever, biology or chemistry, all that kind of crap. And water is just water is own good. <laughs> You know, perhaps a story like yours might wake him up because I know that psoriasis and eczema, they're pretty similar. Um, and so what, would you mind sharing your story with our audience? Sure, of course. Um, you know, they had me on the steroid creams when I was uh, four, five, six years old. And um, I, even my mom at night would put socks on my hands with duct tape so I wouldn't scratch and itch because I just burned and itched and scratched all of the time. And looking back on it, I wonder, you know, how much it was messing with my mind, even though it was a physical thing. It's like, it was constant, you know, there, uh, when I would crack and bleed and have to go in to take school pictures, you know, and my mom's trying to cover up what's going on on my face at, you know, five and six years old. And um, it wasn't until I moved out of the state really high into the woods in the mountains of California and got off of the city water. And I didn't put two and two together, but my skin cleared up. Not only that, my digestive issues cleared up too, because I had those two where I wouldn't go to the bathroom for three or four days. And I thought that was a normal thing. Oh. And um, then I came back to Washington. Um, yeah, we're about <laughs> two years ago um, to help my mom through a shoulder surgery and was washing the dishes in the house and taking showers. And my skin started to get bad again and my digestive issues came back and I'm going what is going on well the difference was the water the water was different and um, so I started going to a well down the road and getting my own water and collecting 15 gallons at a time and bringing it back and um, we were stuck up in the house for two months with this shoulder surgery helping my mom repair and I was like, you know what, let's get out of here. So we heard about this vegetarian festival, free food. That'll get my dad to anything. And uh, first booth I walk up to is Dan's. I see the colors on the table and I was like, what is this? And he starts explaining, well, I, after I listened to Dan, I couldn't think of anything else but the water, walking around, eating these samples. I was like, this doesn't even matter. I need to find out more about this water. So Dan offered to share the water with me for you know a week 10 days is usually what he says i know he would share for a lot longer than that but um i said okay if you're going to share with me will you share with my parents and my dog i have a 120 pound rottweiler yeah sure after four days my dad named the water fart water <laughs> i don't know if that's too much information but he goes there's something about this um after five days my dog had too much energy for me I actually had to take him off the 9.5 and put him on 8.5. Um, my skin started to clear up. Then he offered me the spa. And actually what happened is the water started pushing stuff out of me where I actually started getting rashes at first. You know, in the first seven days, I was like, I don't know about this water. I'm getting these rashes. Well, it was my body pushing the stuff out. Seven days also, my dad's acid reflux was gone. I bought on the 10th day because he said, you know what? I haven't felt this good in four years. So to see the changes in my dog and my parents and then start to feel the changes inside of my body and what was going on outside of my body, I, I just couldn't ignore it. 
you know, we, we read this um, statement in, when we were in Mexico that says, you know, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice. And when we see results like that, when I saw results like that, you know, I made a choice for my family and um, it has made all the difference. Wow. Yeah. That is so awesome. I love it. You know, that the, the ways and the, the people get involved and the things that happen uh, every day, it just makes me believe that there is indeed something out there, something bigger than us that's putting all this stuff together, making it happen. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a tremendous blessing. And I can't help myself with being the, the Kong's water snob and the, and the guy who just won't shut up to the ad nauseum of all my friends and family and everybody else around. Um, but whatever, I'm, my mission is to change the world. And the way I'm going to do it is by sharing this water, by changing lives of people. And yeah. it's, it's just so incredible to be, be around this kind of stuff and it's getting better and more exciting every single day. Um, I'm sitting here with goosebumps, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How are you, Paul? You're a walk. My buddy is a walking K-8. <laughs> I love Thank it. Thank you. Yeah, bro. So, um, you know, Dan, I love, to, I love to ask this question. And, uh, you know, you, you've already probably heard it asked of other people, but I need to ask it of you now. Um, you've got somebody that's interested, curious, and you only get to say one thing to them. That's it. You get to say one thing. And that thing's going to make or break whether they jump, jump to this side of the fence or that side of the fence. What, uh, what are you going to say to that person? Well, I don't know. I got a motor mouth, buddy. I got, about, I got, I got a few of those. I say, you know, I really, I, I, you know, if I could sum it up, I, I mean, I usually say, you know, this, this is the greatest gift on the planet that the world has never heard of, you know, and you may have preconceived notions about this, that, and the other, but what if? What if we could change everything, you know, and the bottom line is if I can compel somebody enough to drink, we have the greatest product in the world. The water will do the heavy lifting. So all I've got to do is get my foot in the door, get that demo in their house, get them to try, you know, and, I'm, and don't get me wrong. Not everybody that drinks a glass of Kong and water buys a machine because that's their own preconceived notions or maybe they go on Google or whatever. But, you know, I mean, I, I truly believe it. The people I hang around with, spend my life, believe it, you know, this truly is the greatest gift in the world that nobody knows about. And, you know, if that doesn't compel you to, to, to try something different, you know, and I've got a lot of things that I say to people and, you know, I, but, you know, this is it. I mean, unless, you know, Daniel D. McCall also says, until we start selling air, man, you know, you better get behind this project because, you know, we have something that's so significantly different than anything else out there. And, and, and that's how I do it. I, I sit there, I, I'm, like I said before, I'm baffled sometimes that how something this powerful that works in such a high percentage of people can possibly be kept a secret. It's just, it's almost baffling to me. Well, I'm, I, I, I love that. And, and, and it's, you know, that, that question is one of my favorites just because it always brings out a different reply from, from pretty sure. much everybody. Everybody yeah. has something different that would be their their go-to move, whatever, their their thing that hits them hardest in the heart that they believe would be the most powerful. And and so just those kinds of things coming out on a consistent basis is is certainly going to help the family that's willing to to tune in and, and listen up because you know that's another big part of this is dropping golden nuggets on people that'll help them in their business, help them in their lives, help them make the wise choice of getting involved with the Kong family. And, uh, you know, so what I, what I talk about a lot here every, every day, this is part of, part of the show and the questioning. And uh, with, with this part after this, then I want to get into any questions that anybody else might have for you. Cause sometimes just the answers end, end up stimulating other questions. Um, mm -hmm. But make the wise choice of getting involved with the Kong family. Yeah, what, what was that? I didn't catch that on my phone. I didn't either. I didn't either. Well, bear with us there, iPhone. We'll, uh, we'll get to you here soon. Look at you. So, um, 
you one of one of my big things with this as well as share as well as sharing stories is to unite people and to get people to join together with each other because I, I firmly believe that somebody may resonate with me they may not they may resonate with you they may resonate with Tristan or or Corolla or whoever and so everybody that comes on here I want them to you know as the main guest um, and hopefully some of these other folks will come on in, in at future times and share their stories. And so we can unite them with people as well. For sure. I always love to give everybody the opportunity because somebody might be watching this down the road and go, man, that Dan Edlund, I, I got to get a hold of him and, and his sweetie Liz, I got to get, I got to get a hold of those people. So, how the heck do they do it? How do they get a hold of you? What's the best way? Do you have websites? Do you have you know, Facebook uh, stuff and, you know, whatever, whatever uh, kind of contact you know, information. Anybody can contact me on, anybody can contact me on Facebook. It's just Dan Edlin, you know, just how it looks in the thing. And um, my site, I, I mean, I keep a, an, an agic site for the back office. It's kongandan.com, um, you know, but anybody in the world can call me, have my number. Um, I, you know, anybody that knows me, and if anybody wants to say any different, they can, but I mean, I help everybody. I mean, I, I, you know, Liz, I drive her nuts because I'll spend an hour a day on the phone with people who are not in my business, not in the state of Washington. They've been orphaned. Um, they don't have help. I mean, I'll, I'll answer, you know, 31 questions from somebody and then be like, you know, and I'll ask them after a while, who the, who the hell is your upline that's just abandoned you? And they're like, oh, my mom. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> well, where's your mom? Oh, well, I live with her. And she doesn't know it. She just, but they don't know anything. So, I mean, the thing is, is, you know, and we talked a little bit about this last night on Carlos Gonzalez's Zoom call, but, you know, there's so many people out there that don't have, um, don't have good information. And, you know, Paul Nelson, I mean, me and Paul talk all the time. Paul will call me and, hey, can you help me with this? Hey, I've got this guy. I will truly, and if people say it, some of them may mean it, but anybody will tell you I truly help anybody. And so, you know, I've got great videos to send, great third-party validation, you know, great, uh, you know, doing three-way calls, things like that. But, um, you know, we want everybody to win. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the guy sitting here going, you know, if I'm not making 50 grand a month, I'm not happy. That's not me. I want to I wanna be able to live a life by design, which, I, which I've been blessed to be able to do. I wake up in the morning. I don't have to answer to anybody. I'm not, you know, going to go throw on a suit the second that this call is done and, and go running off somewhere. I mean, I get to live an amazing life doing what I do and helping others. And to me, that's helping everybody. So anybody that wants to reach out to me, you know, my number is 206-769-0692. Um, you know, and I get three, four, five of those a week, just, you know, off of Facebook alone, just people reaching out from, you know, Michigan and Illinois and you know, 98% of the time, they're already a distributor and they're just looking for some help or a video for this or something for that. But, you know, whether it's somebody new that's coming into the business or interested in the business or somebody who's just been abandoned, you know, I truly feel like, um, you know, we all have to help each other. I mean, you know, Steve is probably one of my dearest friends and, and one of my closest business partners, but, you know, we're not in the same business, JJ. You know, we put on events together. And, you know, and by the way, he's an amazing giving soul and, you know, and I would highly recommend touching base with him and getting him on here. But, you know, you got to you got to understand. I mean, we we don't mind helping each other. We, we put on our Saturday meetings. Everybody's invited because we understand the big picture of this. You know, my selling machines out here in Washington is going to help you someday in Utah because somebody from Utah that you've been talking to that thinks you're insane is going to walk into some other third party venue and go, that's that thing I think JJ's been talking. Maybe I should look at that. And the reason that I say that to you is because it's happened to me. And, you know, I've had people that I've talked to about this, sent videos, tried to share water with, don't want anything to do with it. And they'll call me up and go, can I, can I buy one of those? And I'm like, what happened? Oh, I walked into this chiropractor. He told me it was the greatest, greatest thing he's ever seen. I should get one tomorrow. And I, but, but I remembered what you told me about, hey, remember who introduced, remember who cared about your health. But sometimes I'll say that to people. Remember who cared about your health. You know, I want you to remember me and the fact that I tried to introduce this to you. So, um, you know, but anybody that's been around this project knows this is coming. This is about exponential growth. I don't want to be held 
accountable for my numbers, but I believe it was 42 years to sell the first million devices. I believe we'll sell the second million in under four. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out what's going to happen to the third million and where this is going. And the thing is, is, you know, I want everybody on here to win. I want everybody around me to win. And, you know, there's 8 billion people out there. We, there there's plenty for everybody. I, I tell yeah. everybody, you know, we said this in training yesterday, you know, if you're in this room, you're already such an early adapter that all you got to do is not quit. And five years, seven years from now, you'll have a significantly different life. Yes. Amen. You know, Dan, did, did I tell you I love you today? No, no. <laughs> I do. I love you, buddy. You know, because the thing is, is that's that's what this is all about. That's exactly how I am. I don't care. I don't care whether people are on my team or not. I tell people all the time, hey, just go get your machine. I don't care. Get it from me. Right. If you get it from me, great. But if you don't, go get it. Just that's and, the key. And, and JJ, I'm going to be real. I'm going to be real honest with you for a second too, because the thing is, is you know, I only have so much time, and I do spend a lot of it with others. And the thing is, is you know, I listened to a few of your deals before I really started saying to people that I know, like, and trust, hey, you know, check this out. Let's support this guy because I saw that in your heart, and I heard you say, you know, I've helped people, and I don't care if they buy it from me. I just want them to have a, the device, and that's what resonated me uh, to you. And so I wanted to share that with you. But the thing is, is, is that's the thing, um, the lesson in there is it only takes one thing to make a huge difference because, you know, if I got on here and saw that you were just all about the money or all about yourself, you know, I probably wouldn't be spending my, my morning with you. But the thing is, is I see that you're a lot like the people that I hang around with and that you, you do want everybody to win regardless of it benefits you. And I'm not saying we can all give away everything. We got to make a living too. And you got to, you know, you got to, this, this has to has to mean something for all of us. But the thing is, is I saw in your heart that you were you were doing it the right way. And that's something that me and Steve talk about. You know, it's like you can be doing this, that and the other. But is that person doing it the right way? And that's what we're looking for in our group. And um, that's really something that seems to kind of flow around the Seattle office is there's a lot of people willing to help a lot of other people. So, Amen. Yeah, that, that's what that, what makes this family, you know, when I call it the Kong family, um, it really and truly is a family. And I, the, the way I am is I always have to joke about everything. I got to find some sort of a way to, to throw humor in with everything that I do. And, uh, you know, I always tell people, how do you think that gorilla got so big? He's out there drinking Kong's water in the, jungle, in the base of the waterfall, sticking that big head down there under the waterfall. And you know, so it just came natural to me because that beautiful lady, she says, Kong in water 9.5. She doesn't say king in water. And right. so it just came natural to me. And I, sure. you know, I'm, people call it magic water. You know, Dr. Michael calls it sky water because he named it after his daughter who, it, sure. you know, gave her a machine what it needed so it could heal itself. And, you know, I love the, the fart water. That's classic. I'm going to have to use that a little bit. That's going to be. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, well, that's, you what, that's if, I, if I ever have, if I ever have anybody with, you know, I don't know about calling it fart water, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> if anybody's ever constipated, I need about three to five days and then they're getting one too. So, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, and you know, colon's so amazing for the rest of the body's health. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a big thing. And then, you know, and you're going to bat a thousand if you're looking in that direction. So. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? So now at this point, um, I would like to, because you, you've answered all my questions that I had, and, uh, and at this point, I'd kind of like to reach out to, to the crowd and see if anybody has anything they'd like to say. And I, I was thinking maybe Steve might be the best person to reach out to first, as, as, as I'm wondering if, if like Steve or, or Tristan or any of you that, that know Dan, um, from the things that you've heard him talk about so far this evening, anything that that like you or because i know the other day when tristan was talking dan said hey you got to tell him about that that or the other you know is there anything in there that you can bring to his brain cell that he's forgotten about that we should probably hear today i got one jj there you go let's hear it uh dan can you talk i, I mean i know we got to be careful but can you talk about the family that you helped with cancer yeah, um, we had a, you know, and, and it's, and it's one, one story of many, but we have a, we had a lady uh, that was local and, um, you know, just had, just had horrific levels of what was that? 
and uh, Johnny Steele was. Oh, they call it your markers. Yeah, your markers, who were which were incredibly high, and um, you know we put her on the water, and she had some amazing, amazing results. And unfortunately, it's it's kind of gone in the direction where they've had to do some surgeries for other stuff, and you know. It's just amazing. It's amazing what we get to deal with with this water. But um, you know, on the other end, we do have to deal with the reality of life too. And 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 things will go sideways for other reasons. And it's sad to have to watch people's you know health unfold before you. But um, you know, but yeah, she had tremendous tremendous um, you know movement with her markers and things like that. And and you know, we can only hope that the water and the oop and the turmeric continue to help her. You know, we talked to her. She's going through really, really difficult other medical stuff, but she reaches out to Liz and, and I all the time and just says, you know, I love you guys so much. We just went over to her son's um, house the other day. He just bought a brand new home and we moved, think about this, we moved his two machines and his three spas and got everything hooked up. So there's a guy that understands the value of having the water in the house. He actually has a machine upstairs, a machine downstairs and three spas in his home. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. That is classic. So, uh, Steve, I'm imagining that you, you you look like you're chomping at the bit there. You got something you got to ask. <laughs> He's got a talent. Hey, guys. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me on, JJ, and have, and putting this on for Enagic and what you do. Um, you know, I remember seeing you in Vegas uh, with the shirts, Kong's Water, and I'm like, wait, what? I'm in the business, and I'm like, what is that? So, I mean, what a great conversation piece and um, kind of a parody on what we do. And uh, so that's really cool. But, you know, one of the things that I just want to point out is, uh, you know, especially as I'm listening to, uh, you know, you interview Dan and hear Dan's responses. Uh, I just have to say, man, one of the greatest inspirations I've found in this business is the way that Dan operates. Because, I mean, if, if you were to look at Mr. Oshiro's heart, and what he's trying to accomplish with this global mission, Dan is the personification of that. And, 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 you know, what I mean by that is that, you know, he's not just in this for himself, you know, he truly is in this for everyone. I can't tell you the number of times that, you know, I have, you know, come up against my own issues in this business or, you know, frustrations and, and Dan's kind of talked me off the fence. You know what I mean? And we all get to that point. We all do. It doesn't matter how long you've been part of this. You're going to get to a point and, you know, Dan has been there and what he does, um, you know, with the trainings that we do and, you know, the events in the spaghetti factory and all these demos, uh, you know, he's willing to go out of his way for other people because, he understands that this isn't just about putting uh, checks with blue E's in our, en in our uh, mailbox. This isn't just about selling machines, which is a phrase that we kind of need to take out of our vocabulary because, you know, I love how Don Prosser talks about, Oh, would you sell a washing machine or a microwave? You know, would, you know, we need to get away from this mentality of selling machines and more toward helping families and helping change the trajectory of other lives. Yeah. And, um, and Dan understands that, you know, one day we're all going to be 682-3 and above. Everyone that's on this call that got up early this morning to be on this call is bound to be a dash three or higher because of your commitment. And when that day comes, we're all going to be taking part of the success. So he sees the long-term vision. He sees beyond you know, making a sale this week and getting a check in the mail a couple weeks later. And I, I really wish that more people in Enagic would, uh, would take hold of that same philosophy. Yeah. Amen. Isn't that the truth? And, you know, that's, that's people like us that like Dan and I and yourself, and, and I'm sure everybody that's here, we understand the laws, the laws of attraction, uh, the laws of, of positivity and, and that kind of thing. And the, you know, what happens when you help other people, it comes back to you a thousand times over. One of my mottos is, yeah. is do good and be good and always do the right thing. No matter how much it hurts, do the right thing. Because if you do that, it always ends up coming back to you tenfold over, over whatever, whatever the pain was of, of doing that right thing. Um, you know, I've, I've been in the flooring business for 30 years and I'm, I'm now out of that business. Thank 
thank God, you know, because I've got I've had four knee surgeries and crawling around on your oh, knees yeah. isn't fun when you've had four knee surgeries. Oh. And, you know, Kong and Water has been a blessing in that department. But, you know, I've had things happening with my flooring business where the manufacturer and, and that wouldn't take care of the issue. And they avoided the warranty for some stupid, ridiculous reason or whatever. And so who's left? Me. I took care of it. And, right. uh, and it was painful. It cost me a lot of money. But in the long run, it came back so many times because I, I left the situation with my integrity intact. And I left with a happy customer with a smile on their face who was willing to tell people good things about me instead of telling people what a garbage I am. And, you know, so to me, this all is in that same ballpark. And that's why I say to people, I don't care where you get. I had a lady come and get water from me for, for a while. And then she went and bought her machine from someone else because she was mad at my upline. And I didn't get mad. I just told her, hey, no worries. I'm glad you got your machine. If you ever need any help, I'm here. I'm, I'm always here to help. If, if there's anything I can do, let me know. And I'm just happy for you that you got your machine. And, and the truth is, I'm, I'm truly happy for people. If she would have bought her machine from me, great. That would have been awesome. But I don't care. It's not about the money. I know, I know from my heart and, and soul that the money's going to come. Because there are going to be people out there who are going to resonate with me and they're going to want sure. to buy their machines from me. And that's fine. That is going to happen. I'm just going to stay consistent, keep sharing the vision, keep sharing the magic, keep sharing the gift that, that God and Mr. Oshiro endowed us with. And, and I'm every day so thankful for Brittany and for, for my buddy, Tim, who was consistently consistent and persistent. And, and finally my brain cell opened up and, you know, here we are having a little fun in the mornings. And, and so now I've got another, what, what you just said, Steve, brought a question to my mind that I'd love you to tap, to kind of just talk a little bit about. You say that you have these meetings at the spaghetti factory. Um, does the spaghetti factory use Kong? Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a, that's a tough one to answer. Well, actually we have been, uh, slowly dripping on them for a couple years now since they are a uh they're part of a restaurant chain it's kind of hard to get past that red tape and but i am glad that you brought up restaurants because um and i'm not going to get too far into this uh but i was part of the restaurant industry for 18 years so um you know and i know firsthand the power of what this can bring to that industry and um so as a result i've been able to uh, go in and uh, walk the walk and talk the talk with restaurateurs and chefs and, and general managers and really help some high-end restaurants implement this technology. Um, but, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with a corporation like that, like, you know, Starbucks, Starbucks for example, they know about this. And, and I know from so, so, some people that have been working with them in the past that, you know, they've, they show an interest, but it, it could be three to five to seven years before implementation because of all the red tape and all the R and D that needs to happen. Right. Um, so, you know, we're working on that, uh, the spaghetti factory, but there are other restaurants in the area that are using this technology that we would like to partner with going forward in doing those events. Awesome. But, but you Steve. know, you know, Steve, can you hear me? Yeah, Tristan, go ahead. Mention, Tristan. mention the lake house video that we made. So, okay. Yeah. Thank you for that, Tristan. If, yeah. uh, if anyone's, anyone that's on this call that would like to see how a restaurant is using this and an interview, an exclusive interview with a, a James Beard award-winning chef, he's been uh, recognized by Food and Wine. He's been recognized as a James Beard award winner, which is a huge deal. If you know anything about uh, the restaurant business, uh, James Beard is the creme de la creme of honors that you can get as a chef. Um, and he's been, uh, he's been using this technology for about two years now in uh, one of the top end restaurants in Seattle. Now you can access this interview if you just uh, look there in where my, uh, where my face is, there's my name, go to YouTube, search for me, find the picture of my face and scroll through the videos. You're gonna see the interview with the lake house owner and chef uh chef jason wilson and tristan and i had the honor of going in there last summer and doing this video and you know we interview him for 
it was well over 40 minutes. We cut the video down to 25. And then at the end, <clears throat> the last five minutes, if you don't have time, scroll to the end and watch the demo that we do in the back of the restaurant. Watch where he's washing the tomatoes with the water and he's explaining what's happening and how they're using it. It's very powerful. Yes, I've actually seen that video. And so I can attest that, yes, it is awesome. And, you know, Steve, I'd love to have you come on here sometime soon. As soon as your, your busy schedule permits, you just let me know. And I'd love to, I want to hear your story, of course, how, how you got involved. And we'll save that for when you come on. Um, but I'd love to do a, I'd love to do a, you know, something that's directed towards that. Because quite frankly, everybody goes out and eats at restaurants. And, and you know, I've got a local restaurant I've been working with. And, and the simple fact of the matter is, I don't want to go in and eat their, their Philly subs with, yeah. uh, with tainted tomatoes and tainted peppers and tainted onions and tainted lettuce and all that crap. I don't want that. And yeah. I need to figure out how to get in to these people because I like to go out and eat at restaurants every now and again. But knowing what I know about the, the fruits and vegetables that are out there and the simple fact that you can't clean that crap off with water, you got to have calm. And <laughs> without it, you can't clean it. And so I'd love to do a special edition at some point in time, if you wouldn't mind. And of course, we'll get it. This is all being recorded. It's going to be available to everybody. And uh, if everybody would indulge me at the end here before we before we cut out, I'd like to take a picture so that I can get everybody's uh, names and everything and tag everybody in the video, uh, you know, in the, in the YouTube, so that, uh, you know, it just makes it better to be able to potentially get everybody that's here a little bit of, uh, a little bit of traction. Um, and and I, sh I shared my contact information <laughs> up in the chat box there with my phone number and my email. So if you, uh, want to reach out for any of that, any of those videos, just uh, shoot me a text or an email. Yeah, I plan on hooking up with you. I was, that was one of my things that I've written down. I got to get a hold of Steve today. I got to friend up with him and uh, see if we can work out a time to get you in here. Let's and, do it. Uh, you know, I just noticed you guys that my, my, my partner in crime, my brother, <laughs> Sean Wetzel, he popped in to grace us with his presence here today. And you know, he, he's awesome. He always brings tremendous value to the show. And he's been involved with the Kong family for over 10 years. And, um, you know, so, Sean, I, I'm curious as to whether you, you know, what you've been listening in on. Do you have anything to comment on uh, to Dan um, uh, from what you've heard or whatever? Is it stimulated <clears throat> in that brain cell of yours? <laughs> right, right, right. Hey, dig there. it, man. I'm on the road. I get home. My Wi-Fi starts lighting me up like a Christmas tree. Just ding, 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 ding. I see the Kong live and I see the Brady Bunch and I'm like, hell, I'm missing a damn party. I need to get my dancing shoes on and get away from the punch bowl and get out there and get down on it like cool in the gang. And then the DJ Beaumont is up there mixing and spinning like Beck. He's up there like he's a New York City DJ, just dropping rhymes, dude. I'm tracking Beaumont's ass down. But, yeah, hey, look, sounds like you guys got a lot going on. I'm really sorry I missed the early part of it. But, yeah, I'm whipping this horse like the cavalry's chasing me. So I'm just trying to stay up with it. And, uh, yeah, dude, I the restaurant thing caught the tail end of that. Man, I am chomping at the bit like a horse in the gates of the Kentucky Derby just to hit a restaurant. Bust those things open. Restaurants need them. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I really caught that last part of it. I was looking forward to listening to some of Edlin's mastery, and we're, get, we're gang tackling the world with some Kong and love from all angles. I love it. So, yeah. I really didn't get much of it other than Beaumont wrapping up his verbal diatribe and his info session. And uh, I screenshotted that, by the way, there, SB. Um, yeah, man, keep bringing it. Don't let me interrupt. Thank you for acknowledging your uh, brethren in that regard. But, uh, yeah, at this stage, yeah, take that photo. Yeah. I hope I don't crack your screen. <laughs> <laughs> what was that how tall were you when you first got involved with kong there Sean? you guys i was five foot four and uglier in the dickens now 10 years later i am six foot nine and 
Well, I'm six foot nine and, uh, well, I'm six nine. I didn't get any better looking, but I'm taller and sometimes you can't have it all, you know. <laughs> oh man, I disagree, brother. I think you're handsome, <laughs> handsome as can be. I love you. <laughs> so I'm just curious if anybody else has, um, has anything that they would like to ask of Dan. Is there anything that uh, sprung up that you'd like to, to throw at him? I know I need to get my skinny ass out to Washington and kind of connect with some of these cats because they, uh, they got it going on. Yes, they do. I'll tell you what, anybody, uh, first of all, Sean, I'm glad to see. I, I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. This is the first time I've gone on here when you weren't there. Hell no. Right, yeah. right. So, um, but I will, I will tell you this, anybody who ever wants to make the trek, I mean, it's just, it's a great group out of here. I'm so blessed. I actually, um, you know, when I, when I think, when I look back on it, you know, they always say, you know, when things are meant to be, I was introduced to this water, like I said, five years ago, didn't get involved until a little under four years ago, but I had purchased a home in the interim, new before I knew anything about Congan water and I live 1.2 miles from the Seattle office. God bless you. So, so if I need something or if I will, I mean, I could literally hang up and be there in three minutes. And so it's, it's really blessed, but I'll tell you what, any of you guys are always welcome. We have an extra room here. We have amazing stuff going on at that office. And if you ever see a Saturday there, man, it's really great. We have a lot of unity, great people, you know, People like Liz, Tristan's there a lot, Steve, Sam Tran, Paul. I mean, all of us are kind of in that little local group and, and lots more. And I think opening it up to, you know, getting Steve on here and getting other people from our group will not only give you great exposure, but kind of show you the kind of people you're dealing with when you do come out here. And I think you guys would just have a great experience. Yeah. No, it's just, it's neat to see that whole Washington scene blowing up. You know, I used to live out there. I used to raise a little hell out in Shoreline, North Shore, uh, <laughs> in that part of Linwood, up off of 99. I'd go to Green Lake to play ball, but I really went to Green Lake because there were so many gorgeous women roller skating around there. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I'm supposed to be playing ball, and I'm getting drilled upside the head with a basketball because some dime walked by, and I'm like <laughs> Chester the Cheetah. I, 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 you know, so, yeah, man. Um I've got to get out there. I haven't been out there for, uh, to me, I had a training a couple of years ago out in uh, Tacoma and Jelena or Jim Gilliland and, uh, you know, Antonina and Siha. And there was just a handful of Stratton was up there. I need to come out there and get dialed in uh, with you guys. So I'm only in South of Missoula here in Montana, about 30 miles South. So it ain't nothing but a G thing, baby, to hit the road and head West on I-90. So, I'm going to keep that all I'm going to keep that all uh in my focus in my perspective as JJ knows I've got my hands full with a lot of domestic personal detail but I'm juggling them like I'm the master circus juggler right now because that's what God wants me to do and if I drop them and get all whatever that eh, ain't going to solve anything so yeah I'm knee deep in the hoopla with uh, some other stuff but I'm just working on things and I love the Kong show this thing has turned into something that is just like gravy on biscuits. And uh, we all know that's one hell of a combination. <laughs> so, yeah, man, you guys are beautiful. Hey, yeah, Adeline, God bless you. You are a good-looking guy, but I think you did overachieve right there, my friend. You, you oh. overachieved. <laughs> Total. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, Dan, I, I would like to, you know, we're, we're almost an hour into this. And um, so I wanted to just ask you, um, just one last thing um, as to whether you have, you know, one last parting message for today, because I know that you're, you're going to be back on here again. I know that, and, oh, and sure. uh, you know, you're going to be sh dropping golden nuggets till the end of time here on the Kong family show. But as far as today is concerned and what, what's been talked about today, the people that are here today and the people that are listening online um, and the people that are going to see this on YouTube as, as the months and years go by, do you have any parting thing that you would like to say just as, you know, whatever well, you come up with? And first of all, first of all, I want to acknowledge Steve and say thank you. Thank you. Steve is not, uh, he doesn't love 7 a.m. Um, I, I, I asked him to get up a little early. I wanted you guys to connect. I thank you for your kind words, brother. You know, I love you and thank you so much. So, um, 
I, yeah, you know, I was thinking in the future, we'd do a little show on structure because that's kind of what I specialize in. I help a lot. I had help a lot of people with that. Um, and, and, I, and I think that that's vital. Sean could probably attest to that um, as far as, you know, building your business, the difference um, of, of doing that correctly. And I'd like to do that. But what I would tell people is, you know, um, I want you to understand, and I think I said it to you last week when we were talking about is, um, even though I get to do this and live a life by design and stuff, it's a work in progress. I want to, I want to be absolutely honest and say, you know, um, we don't have this thing perfected. You know, I don't have this thing perfected. I make mistakes all the time. I look back. I've, you know, Liz chastised me the other day for babysitting some people in my downline. I'm guilty of that. I mean, I, you know, this is a work in progress for all of us, but the thing is, is with, um, avenues like this for us all to come together. We can really learn from each other. And, um, you know, and if you're looking for one last thing to go out, like I said, I mean, we're all such early adapters that the biggest thing I tell people is the only way you lose with an Agic and Kong and water is if you quit. That's the only way you lose. That's the only given. But the thing is, if you stay true to this and you really look at the three, five, seven years of where Enagic's going. I mean, Steve one time put to great, together a great little sales chart that's, um, that kind of shows the progress of the sales of Enagic over the years. And it looks like a stock that you would want to own yesterday. Trust me. And the thing is, where this is going, all we have to do is, is stay in the fold. You know, Steve says at best, he says, you know, three, five, seven years from now, you know, and you want to do things like this and put out, put out the kind of person you are because people won't be, it's not a question if they're going to get a Kongan machine. It's a question of who they're going to get it from. You know and what I mean? When. And, and when, and the thing is, and if you're not, if you're one of those people that's not known to have a good heart and you're not giving. And so we're all kind of laying our foundation for the business, not only that we want to have today, but the business that we want to have in the future. And, you know, I want to do everything the right way by as many people as I can, because I do want people to reach out one day and go, Hey, I want to be in your business. And it's happened to me in the past. And I hope it happens a lot more in the future, but we're really building the building blocks for what's to come because we all know how big this thing is going to be. And, um, so, so in times of frustration, you know, um, Roger reached out and we were doing a little, uh, texting earlier this week and I was just, you know, sent off some videos and some things that would help, but you know, um, that's the thing, build a foundation, get those videos together, you know, learn objections, you know, see the fact that people are going to bring up competition and crap machines and stuff like that, but have your information because now's the time to really build that for what's coming, you know, and it's, and it's going to be huge. So like I said, my big thing is the only ones that lose are the ones that quit because the people that are on this call are so early, you know, all we can do is win if we stay in the fold. So, you know, that's what I would leave with. <clears throat> I have a question. Don't mind. Sure. First of all, I would explain my hairstyle. I mean, JJ, I Beautiful. Pretty, much, pretty much daily on another show and he and me, me and him are bogging with the hairstyle. So, <laughs> but <clears throat> I would a little bit like to hear about your follow up sequence, how you do it. Right. Um, well, so obviously, you know, you interview, identify, somebody wants something. My go-to is usually, um, you know, if I send you a video, would you? I sent you a couple videos the other day. I have a ton of different videos, whether they're health or whether they're more business-minded, sometimes a combination of both, whether they're more, you know, to the sports, to the athletics. So I, I obviously tailor my follow-up as far as videos to the person that I'm dealing with. And then immediately, immediately try and A, get the water into them or B, get a demo in their house. Um, my big thing, a lot of guys do it differently. My big thing is we have three demos and we like to keep those things moving into people's homes. You know, I, it's great to go share water with people. It's not always the most feasible thing, but I can drive 17 miles across town, give a 15 minute, 10 minute demo in the home pop a demo machine in there and leave it for 10 days and, and, you know, let the, let the water do the heavy lifting. I do realize that's not, that's not an avenue that everybody can take. So if you can't, the real trick is getting some water in them. Um, I've always found if you give somebody the water and they've never seen anything, it's one thing. If you show them everything and they don't get the water, it's, it's a missing link. The segue and the, and the perfect marriage of this 
is when they see the, the contents of what we have and have the chance to drink the water. And when that comes together, that's where you're gonna, that's where you're gonna find people wanting to, to get involved. And so there, there's no universal answer. You really have to cater it to the individual. Certain objections are going to come up. And, you know, we could, we could do a whole show on objections one day if you'd like, because, you know, I've heard them all. But as Sean, I'm sure, has and Steve and everybody else. But the thing is, is um, be consistent. And I don't know if you were on earlier. And like I said, I never leave a situation in a bad way. Even if you sent videos shared a little water, it's not the right time, it's financial, it's this, it's that. Whether it's the truth or not, I want you to always, everybody can steal my line, and if you do, I'm telling you it's worth it. I tell people, I understand it's not the right time. Here is my card, please don't lose it. You will see this again. I promise you, you will see this technology again. And when you do, I just want you to remember who is trying to help you with your health first. You know, and I found that to be very, very beneficial. That's amen. More golden nuggets, kids, right here on the Card Family Show from from you our know, brothers that are and sisters that are involved with this thing. It's so incredible, and it's exactly. and um, does anybody else have anything that they would like to add, or you know, anything that uh, you know? We got a little bit more time here, maybe, and you know. So, if anybody has anything they'd like to, I want to chime in, brother. There you go. Hey, uh, thank you, Dan, so much for your time this morning, you and Liz both. Uh, I spent uh, 20 minutes, 30 minutes with Dan the other day, and when I left the Linwood office, I was like, you know, that guy resonates on me because I have that type of energy. And that guy, man, I'm telling you, he is like a walking K-8. When I left that building, <laughs> drinking out of that machine, dude, my, my, my head was just buzzing. I mean, right. I felt incredible talking to Dan Edlin and drinking K8 walk Congan water. My God, you guys are all awesome. Steve Beaumont has given me a lot of inspiration. I've seen Steve struggle and all types of stuff, and that guy is amazing, dude. I am so happy I found JJ and Sean. It just is. I'm, you guys, I'm stoked. Hey, it's all coming together, man. That's the beauty of it, big fella. Geez, you're a shouldery bastard. I love it, man. Did you work? Are you a bodybuilder? Or were you a lineman in college? Or what's your gig? <laughs> tree climber, bro. A tree climber. <laughs> My God, tree you are tree like climber. Magilla gorilla up in the woodlands up there in uh, Woodenville, climbing trees. Holy hey, smack. Hey, I'd like to start. I'd like to go start a bar fight with you, you shouldery monkey. Holy cow. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to get hey, no. out of. JJ's breaking me. <laughs> I'm kidding you. Hey, no, listen. Everything you just said right there, bud. That's the thing. The Dan Edlins, the Beaumonts, the JJs of this world, we're all coming together. And we're coming together to just create that momentum. And this venue, this, you know, this medium, if you will, Man, it's rocking it like Herbie Hancock, and I think we're really getting after it, man. So, yeah, it's great. I want to touch base on what Edlin was dropping earlier about babysitting cats. You know, that's I'm a compassionate dude. I'm a counselor. I'm a relationship builder. So, yeah, I get a little kumbaya sometimes, and I've just come to the realization that I ain't dragging anybody across the finish line with me. If you ain't running, trying to catch up and keep up and cross that finish line with me, you go step off onto the side of the track and lick your wounds and do whatever. We'll be coming around the track again. If they want to hop on, you know, leaving the door open, like you said, but it's kind of a combination between not babysitting, but also leaving the door open, man. It's just saying, listen, you know, and here's my deal. And it's just funny. You guys are going to kick out of this. But I've used this as a coach. I've used this as a dad. Anytime you're trying to drop something on people and they get into the – they can't. I can tell you how to wipe your ass. I can tell you why to wipe your ass. I can put what you wipe you need to wipe your ass with in your hand. But at that point in time, man, I'm throwing a book of matches at you and I'm hitting the door and I'm flicking the fan on. And you better come out of that joint without any shit on your fingers because we got things to do. If I got to go back in there and show you how to wash your hands, man, that's I'm wasting my time. So I'm really trying to help utilize that from a self-sufficiency standpoint. And, yes, yeah, so maybe I'm a little too country for my own good, but that works when you're trying to get people's attention and they're just like, help me, help me, help me. 
You know, I'm like, I will help you with every concept, every mannerism I can. But at the end of the day, we have to do it. You know, you have to do it. They have to do it. So, yeah, and I'm really getting on that. Yeah, and the structure stuff, yeah, I'm, I, I've am i got to make my way out there. I'll get out that way and connect with all you yahoos, and we'll have ourselves a little shindig, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I say yahoos because I'm probably driving that bus. So just know that uh, that takes one to know one. But, no, you guys are beautiful. This thing is getting cool. Sorry I got on so late. But, uh, yeah, I'm jazzed about the directiones. Uh, we are going with this thing. Awesome. Appreciate that. Um, you know, and the thing is, is when he, when he gets back to and talking about the babysitting, and, you know, and, and the thing is, is we want to walk a fine line because the thing is, is really from zero to 20, we want to not only for their own good, but ours is kind of make them self-sufficient. And that's something, you know, and I'll be honest, that's something I really, really lacked in the last couple of years. And I'm really focusing on for this year because, you know, we want to be, um, you know, we want to be duplicatable. And the great thing about, you know, it's great to sell a machine, but the thing is, how nice is it to make somebody self-sufficient by 15, 20, 25 sales? And then from 26 through 100, you know, you're not really that involved. And, 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 you know, the goal is to get a fun, is to get a machine in every home. Obviously, the goal is for health. But on the business side of this, we want passive income. We want, you know, we spent the month of January in Bali. You know, it was nice, nice. to come home to a a great amount of checks. But that doesn't nice. happen. That doesn't happen if nobody can make a move unless you know Dan and Liz are standing there or Steve's holding their hand. So the thing is, is we want orders being processed, whether I'm in Seattle, Arizona, which we're going to be in in June, you know, San Diego for the convention. You know, we don't want the wheel to stop turning just because we decide to go to the ocean for a couple of days. You want that machine moving. And, and that's what we have to do is make people self-sufficient, get it to where they can. And you know what? And, and we enable them to go out and write their own paycheck. And like I said, I'm the first one to admit that was a little bit lacking in my business in the last couple of years. And something we're really focusing on is that zero to 20, getting people to where they can do their own thing and write their own paycheck and really, truly empowering them. Nice. Beautiful. That's yep. it. That's For it. Sure. I like your style, DE. Big time. Hey, hey and you like I it. said, man, you're, you're JJ ever want to come out? We got a beautiful home. We got an empty bedroom. We're, we're a mile from the office. If somebody ever wants to come out for two or three days and hang out and just get some knowledge and uh, come to a super Saturday with us, we're actually having a pretty big event um, right down the street on May 26th. It's going to be a Sunday. It's coming up in about five or six weeks. There's going to be, you know, we'll have 100, 150 people there. That's being put on by a uh, Carlos Gonzalez, who's a Dash 3, also JV nice. JV Pacifical. Oh. JV Pacifico will also be there who is nice. the grandfather of all of us. Probably everybody on this call is in JV's business. Um, he's one of, one of three or four Dash 6s in the world. And uh, he will be there along with Kong and Joe, who is a Dash 4 out of Canada, and his wife, who's a Dash 3 as well. So we're all going to be um, – Steve will be there. Liz, uh, we'll, we'll all be there. But the thing is, that's going to be a great event. You mentioned Seahaw. Seahaw's in Idaho this weekend doing a huge event. So, you know – there's constantly stuff going on, but like I said, anybody's invited to come out here for a couple of days and uh, we'd love to have you. And thanks for having us on the show. Yeah, I'm looking yeah. forward to it. I got to bring up my wives and uh, introduce them to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. I forgot you're in Utah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I have a lot of fun with that. But yeah, I always say that everybody should be so lucky as to meet my wife at least once in their lives. You know, my, my wife worked at the local grocery store here for 29 years. And in 29 years, she's called in sick three times. So I think that really says about everything that needs to be said about my golden little red. She's such a sweetheart. And I, I look forward to coming up and meeting you in person. And for sure. my wife's along with me. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you guys, thank you so much for taking you, brother. all this precious time. I know your time is valuable. All of our time is valuable. And so... You know, that's why we're trying so hard to bring some value to this, to this so that it, it, it's worth it for people to spend some time with us. And for sure, you know, 
you know, thank you so much for, for coming here. And I look forward to getting you back on again here soon. And, and uh, you know, knocking on the, the door of a different subject, uh, you know, to just help people that we want to bring value so that we can, uh, so that we can accomplish our mission of, of changing the world. And we are going to change the world. It is happening. And uh, how is it that we're doing that again, Sean? One glass of Congan water, 9.5 at a time. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about, kids. Congan water, baby. We love it. Up. We live it. We drink it. We share it. It is magic. It is a gift. And uh, thank you so much for coming in here and helping, helping us towards that mission. And, you know, as usual, as always, don't forget your hugs, kids. <laughs> Hoody -hoo. Hoody -hoo. Thanks, you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Amen. Have a great day, everyone. Have Thanks for having us on. Have a good day. Much love, you, you guys. You got it. You got it, Benny the Jet. His, you're killing me, Smalls, is the coolest t-shirt ever. That's, <laughs> thanks, brother. Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Jeez. <laughs> God bless you guys. Look forward to connecting big time. Amen, bro. See you, Okay. Kids. Have a great one. Giddy up, boys and girls. Yes. Thanks, Jeff.